welcome to the floor because today we're going a little bit more casual and we are just going to talk about my updated wish list. Hello, 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 and the warmest of welcome to today's video. For those of you who haven't seen my face before, hi, I'm Nick, glad to have you here. Those who have seen my face before, thank you so much for joining me again. I hope you enjoy my videos. I put out videos roughly three times a week on a range of different topics, anywhere from fashion, to like more personal topics. So if that sounds like something you'd be interested in, then please do head down, hit subscribe, and turn on the notification bell. I love chatting with you all. I'm all about living life loud, and what that means to me is being your authentic self, being proud to be you and just celebrating who you are. Celebrating yourself and celebrating others. So for those of you who may not have seen it, I just wanted to share on a video as well as my community page, the thank you that I put out recently. I just wanted to say a huge thank you to everyone who has supported and continues to support my channel. I absolutely love interacting with all of you. I love hearing your stories, your insights, your thoughts. It keeps everything so fun and so fresh. So please keep interacting. We're nearly a community of a thousand strong, but we could not be where we are today without all of you. So thank you so much. I'm so grateful. And I'm really glad that we're all part of this community who choose to live life loud. But anyway, let's get into it. I'm not going to talk for too long about any one item. I don't want that to, I don't want it to become overly tedious, but I will, I will try and give you as much info and insight as I can. So let's get into it. I have them on my phone here. So, as we know, I have been recently going through this exploration of, should I get my ears pierced? I have made the decision that I will be getting my ears pierced. Therefore, I'm going to need a glamorous set of earrings to go into my ears. And I'm debating between a couple of different pairs, and I would love your insight. I would love your thoughts. The first pair that I think I'm, I think I'm leaning towards more than the second is this lovely pair of Tiffany & Co circle earrings. I just love the simplicity of them. Love that they're a little bit smaller, but they still have a little bit of detailing to them. I don't want a plain stud. I also don't want diamond earrings um, as my first pair because I worried that I would lose them like diamond studs. So I would like something that's a little bit fun and flashy and, you know, designer but without being too in your face. So I really like these Tiffany earrings. However, I'm also incredibly tempted by this pair of Chanel's. I hear interesting things about Chanel costume jewelry. I'd be really intrigued to know what your experience is. Um, I will be honest, I am someone who isn't that careful with where they spray you know, fragrances and all that kind of stuff, hairspray, and I will be the person that will put all the jewellery on and then go, oh, I need to put some hairspray and start spraying it. So I'm probably, does that mean that I'm probably a little bit too carefree to own Chanel costume jewellery? Let me know. I'd be really intrigued. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't know if it would survive me very long. So I think these Tiffany's might be better and the price point. I mean, the Tiffany's are 290 or something along those lines the chanel's the 740 so as a bit of a you know first step into designer jewelry the tiffany's might be the better shout but the chanel's are beautiful i think they're lovely okay next up is a couple of items from longchamp i chose to not purchase anything from the longchamp seasonal sale this year i went for other pieces um instead i went for kurt geiger and aspinall pieces instead i don't regret that it was the right thing for me to do but also because there are a couple of items from longchamp that i'm really considering the first being a custom les pliages so you have a couple of options here you have the my pliage club or there's another my pliage like version so my pliage club means there's less customization that you can do to that particular bag you can kind of pick between certain nylon colors and certain leathers and then logos whereas with the um other version which uh, will be on the screen you can go a little bit further it's a little bit more expensive but you could put for example your full initials across the main bag so i could just put njs across it if i wanted to there's there's a little bit more breadth um, and the bag styles are different as well that they offer it on. To be honest, I think I'm probably going to go for my pliage club just because I don't need to spend the full money. I don't need my initials emblazoned across it. 
what I would like is to have a combination of kind of simple aspects with some neon pops and I can do that with the My Pliage Club and I think it will cost me about £140 or something to do that. So I've already spoken to my sales associate, we're going to book in some time and I'm going to go into the Regent Street store and we're going to get that made. I could do that on the um, online, but I think it's a nice thing to do in store and I haven't been in for a while. So I think it'd be really lovely to go in and see all of the staff. Also, another piece that I'm thinking about is from the Le Pliage Green Collection. I teased this in my last video. And this is from the green collection in the medium top handle. And it is a new um, color for the green collection and it's called Thunderstorm. It is this beautiful shade of blue. I'm kind of missing that. I mean, I have blue, but I'm missing that step between kind of a soft sky blue and more of a navy. And this I feel, uh, this I feel kind of ticks that box. Um, Yes, it's a beautiful, beautiful item. It's a great bag style, very easy to use, very versatile. As you know, I've already got four. So why not add lucky number five? A brand I've been thinking about more and more. And to be honest, this was something that I forgot to mention in the Where Do I See My Collection in 10 Years Time video that I did, the, the tag that Catel had created. Um, I mentioned how I'd be looking to maybe do more customs, maybe move into exotics. I will also be looking to move more into no novelty pieces and I think that the brand that does that best is Moschino and one of the items that I've been thinking about for a long time from Moschino is one of their biker bags. I just love the whimsy of them, they're fun but they still have a practicality to them. They bring them out in some beautiful colours, there's the um, black in kind of the larger size which is current season, then in the sale you've got the beautiful purple and the beautiful blue. These are just fun. They just add a little bit of a pop, a little bit of something unexpected. You could really dress them up or dress them down. And there's something that you don't see very often. And I love things that are niche and I love, I love an element of the unexpected and a twist on, just a twist actually in general. Um, novelty I think is incredible. Why not? Why not have fun? Why not just be playful with fashion and you know experiment a little bit so that was one and then another one that I was looking at from Moschino which I was tempted by and then it went into the sale and I was tempted by it but then I thought realistically what would it work with was this beautiful melted chocolate bag and I like this because it feels kind of novelty Alma to me and I much prefer this to for example the Balenciaga Veal I think this is actually trying to be something different to an Alma the veil bag is, um, yeah, too close, to be honest. Um, but then I was looking at my wardrobe because I was hovering over it because I thought the 570, actually, that's okay because I it's quite a practical bag. I would use it quite a lot, I think, if I had the if I had the wardrobe to match it. And I was looking and I thought, what could I wear this with? And that was where I was coming up short. It would have been a little bit of a standalone. And actually for me in my wardrobe, it's so much easier for me to style like rainbow and Pokemon and things like that than it would have been to style this particular item. I still absolutely love it. If, if I wasn't being conscious about budget and usage, I would just go for it because I love the novelty factor of it. Or I would go out and buy the wardrobe to match it. But I am someone who wears a lot of very bright colours, etc. And whilst I think I probably could wear this with them, I don't know if it would be um, the most flattering combination. So I decided to move away from it, but I love it. And who knows, maybe I'm keeping an eye on it because if it drops even further in the sale, let's say it got to about 350 I would just snap it up and, and make the clothing work for me. So yeah, everything has everything has a threshold that I'm prepared to buy it for. This hasn't yet reached its threshold. I'm not sure it ever will, but we can keep an eye on it. We'll see. This one is a little bit more of a fantasy purchase because if I, I do very much have this exact item and style on or exact item on my wish list. However, this particular style is like fantasy wish list, but the core range absolutely is something that I'm looking to buy. And this is the Christian Louboutin Soakate. However, I am adoring the Strass 
Boom, I think these are called. And this is a, I think it's a velvet shoe underneath with this beautiful placement of multicolor crystals. The way that the black velvet works with the red sole, works with the bold crystals. Oh my word, it is just exceptional, gorgeous, fabulousness. I am in love with it. It is stunning. It is absolutely stunning and wonderful and beautiful. These would just add a pop to any outfit. Oh, I love the Soke anyway. I think the style is exceptional. Um, but this particular version, I mean, it's £1,400. That is a significant amount of money for shoes. The Soke's alone are 595 That's a significant amount of money for shoes. So you're really amping this up. But oh my word, they are beautiful. Um, so sophisticated, but so fun at the same time. If I could say what my personality was in a shoe, I think this is it. I am just not in that income <laughs> bracket <laughs> to be dropping £1,400 on shoes. However, manifesting. We're manifesting it. Who knows? Maybe in, maybe in 10 years, that might be the place. That might be the life I lead. It is not the life I lead currently. You know, we'll see. We'll see. But anyway, so Kate's, but I just wanted to shout out this particular version because I love them. Two pieces from Mulberry now. I love Mulberry. You know this. I recently spoke about what's new from the brand. Um, some beautiful pieces in um, coral orange, eggshell and cornflower blue were three of the core colours um, from within that particular range in their classics, as well as some kind of more modern um, pieces, which were lovely. One of the things that I've been absolutely eyeing up um, from Mulberry, and it's just a case of waiting to find the right one, is a scarf. We know I love a scarf. Um, I think it's an excellent accessory. I think it's such a versatile accessory, and I would really like to own a Mulberry one. I really do love this painted one, um, but I also would like to go back to Vista to have a look at their scarf selection, because I don't know if you remember from my vlog, but there were a lot of really beautiful scarves. Um, so I just need to go and have a little look, but I love this hand-painted one. I love the colours, the green, the pink. It's really, really stunning. The pattern, I think this could be dressed a little bit more formally. You could wear this a little bit more casually. The price point is quite reasonable as well, circa £200. So I'm liking this very, very much. Will it come home with me? Who knows? It's a beautiful item and one that I definitely have firmly on my wish list. Next up, I mentioned this in my um, Mulberry video. <laughs> I am at the Mulberry Monopoly. I think I might buy that next month, actually, because I just think it's really fun. I think it's a bit different. It's playful. It's £75, which I don't feel is a bad price point. The Selfridges Monop Monopoly was £40, I want to say. So to be able to have the Mulberry version as well I think would be really cool we could have a fully luxury game night and I'm here for that let's elevate everyday experiences in a way that feels tangible in a way that feels relevant this feels relevant I absolutely love it the packaging is beautiful the board itself is beautiful to be honest I know what I'll probably do I'll probably end up leaving this out as a little bit of a decorative piece and hey, why not? I decorate with fashion. So why not have a decorative Monopoly game board? I think it could be really fun. So this is definitely firmly on the list. Now, if you speak to YouTubers or probably really most individuals buying luxury and you talk about the items that just aren't worth buying, tech accessories it definitely falls into that category. And I don't exclude myself from thinking that. I absolutely do. However, I have lately become absolutely obsessed with this beautiful Bottega Veneta, um, in, is it Intrachato? Is that how you pronounce the woven, uh, the kind of woven nature of the materials? Um, this beautiful, I think it's a silicone. Yeah, sin silicone iPhone 13 case. Part of the reason being, I love the bright pop of yellow and it would match my Mulberry backpack. So we would have a Bottega and a Mulberry Synergy. And I absolutely love that. The price point's not horrendous either, £140. Is it still a little bit of a stretch? Yes. Is it still within the, you know, probably fantasy wish list aspect? Yes, it is. Most of this is quite realistic. This would fall into the Louboutin, um, into the Louboutin um, overview. But, you know, it's it's pretty nice. Um, I like it very much. It comes in a few different colours. There was an Alexander McQueen phone case I also really liked. Um, so, 
yes, I am debating more and more a luxury tech accessory. I wanted to get one from Aspen of London, but they sold out of the iPhone 13 ones annoyingly. Um, it would have been nice to maybe get one in T-Rose because my phone is pink, so it'd be nice to have gotten the pink Aspinall case, but they, they ran out um, and there's nothing that inspiring from the current season. But this is this is really lovely. I love this Bottega one. I love the kind of intrachato woven silicone. It's really nice, fun, playful. Certainly wouldn't lose your, ba uh, your bag. Wouldn't lose your phone, would you? <laughs> Finally, this is an item that I've spoken about a number of times. I love Trunky Trainers, as you know. I just feel that the way that they can transition across a casual outfit into a formal outfit and give it a little bit of spice and a, and just a little bit of edge and youthfulness is excellent. So I love a Chunky Trainer. My favourite Chunky Trainers, ones that I would own in every colour if I had the money to, are the Alexander McQueen, um, what they call it, Alexander McQueen Graffiti Oversized Sneaker. And I particularly like these in the black and white. Now, white with black writing, black with white writing, both are lovely, both are great. I, for longevity, I would probably get the black leather with the white graffiti writing, just because they won't wear quite as significantly, or they won't look like they're wearing in quite the same way. Um, but because I'm finding with my um, white trainers, they just scuff um, and it's it's quite visible. Um, so wherever you can minimise that, absolutely, I think it's probably the right thing to do. This particular version is an online exclusive. I absolutely love them. I definitely need to go and look at some and try them on. I haven't tried them on in a very long time. I remember trying them on when I think they were called the show sneaker, something along those lines. So they've had a name change and things since. So I would like to just make sure that the fit hasn't changed, but I definitely need to go and have a look at these. I'm very excited by them. So yeah, these could potentially be a new fixture of my wardrobe in the coming months or the coming year. So who knows? So there we have it, everyone. That is where my wish list currently stands. Let me know what you think of the items that I have put on my wish list. Are any of these a crossover with items that you have on your wish list? Anything new that I've informed you about today that you didn't know? Anything that you look and think, Nick, what are you thinking? I love to hear it all. Thank you so much as always for watching. And I look forward to seeing my next video. Take care, everyone. Bye now. Mwah.